Hey, so back for another Records That Shape My Life episode. Uh, today going to be talking about death, and in particular the record Symbolic. Most people that know me and know the music that I make know that this is like hugely in inspirational for me. Uh, I think Symbolic along with And Justice for All really kind of helped define the kind of riffing that I like writing and the kind of stylistic choices that uh, Solos has made in the early days. And both those records had... Uh, I guess progressive elements and mainly just songs with tons of riffs, tons of cool parts, intricate drumming, melodic riffs, thrashy riffs, all that kind of thing. Although and Justice for All and Symbolic don't necessarily sound the same, not necessarily like the same style. Uh, there's a lot of like crossovers between the, the two records and like the overall kind of feel of like the songs, the longer songs and the more, like I say, progressive structures, that kind of thing. So when I checked out Death, I was already into a lot of death metal. All the, you know, classic stuff. Cannibal Corpse, Morbid Angel, Obituary. Uh, I like Decapitated. And I think I remember seeing in, like, Kerrang! magazine when Chuck died, when that was announced, and just reading about it, and just finding it, you know, sad to see someone dying at a young age of a brain tumour. I remember getting Terrorizer magazine, which was more of like a more like extreme metal they had a huge cover feature on chuck and all these people like from bands that i like just talking about how influential he was and that kind of thing so i think i checked out the live record and i don't know if that came out before or after he died off the top of my head uh so live in la admittedly it's not the best sounding live record but like i may have spoken about in some of these previous videos i've made I used to buy live records as like a compilation thing as a potential best of and just kind of digest the material and see like which songs stood out to me and maybe go back and buy the records after hearing the live album, seeing which songs like I liked the most, that kind of thing. So the first record that I bought by Death was Individual Thought Patterns, which is a quirky one just because of loads of crazy loud bass playing in the mix loads of crazy fretless bass slides and everything but musically such a cool record again this was like i guess they'd already gone kind of progressive on human and they kind of ran with the kind of progressive thing a little bit more on individual thought patterns technicality was uh i would say it was upped a bit more uh they had andy laroque from king diamond doing some some of the solos on the record, which are amazing lead guitar playing on that record. And yeah, like that that one's huge, huge for me. Like it's it's definitely up there with Symbolic. And I think I got that one, maybe uh, Sound of Perseverance next. And maybe a few more of the earlier albums. And for some reason at the time in like, I guess, early to mid 2000s, I would never see Symbolic in the shops, in the music stores. I don't know if it was limited in terms of how many copies got pressed to CD, but I would just never see it. So one day I went to London with my girlfriend, who's now my wife, back in the day. And we just like, sometimes we just go to London, go to Camden, where back in the day, there'd be like tons of like music shops and like, like places you can get like metal merch and that kind of thing. And I went into one record store, like a very DIY independent place, and I found Symbolic. I've been waiting to hear that record because I'd heard a few of the tracks on the live album. And then when I finally got it, I was just like engrossed. I couldn't believe how good that record was. And like that really, uh, yeah, made me kind of want to hone in on that type of riffing. And it was so influential. It was kind of like almost like the music that I'd been wanting to hear and wishing... I could have found like in my head like I was like I wish there was music like this and then I found Symbolic and it was like that was it. So admittedly Death aren't like my favourite band of all time um, like Pantera, Metallica and Slipknot were like the main ones for me growing up and I think still are like you know my favourite bands but Death are definitely up there and Death have been in some ways maybe even more influential to like the way I play guitar and the types of riffs that I do and I kind of try and combine the uh the type of riffing in death and some of the technicality or the melodic elements with the more aggressive or groove orientated stuff that you'd hear in like Pantera or Slipknot and uh that's kind of what 
the basis of like solosis sound has always been like in various different degrees maybe we've leaned a bit more on the technical or thrashy side or the progressive stuff or sometimes we've leaned a bit more towards like the groove metal kind of stuff and like big chunky riffs but all of those elements are like a big part of our sound i guess you know so yeah when i got symbolic that cd did not leave my cd player for months that was like all i listened to and it was one of those records that every time i listened to it i'd notice something new or i'd have like a new favorite track and uh i think to this day like obviously the song symbolic's great and the main riff is really iconic but perennial quest is um one of my favorites uh, 1000 eyes I think also lyrically it was really influential to me because obviously the music is really heavy and aggressive but lyrically there's a little bit more thought into the lyrics and the subject matter at that point all the kind of death metal that I'd been listening to was either satanic stuff like Deicide and or maybe like Morbid Angel stuff like Blessed Are the Sick that maybe wasn't all satanic was a bit more like fantasy or you know dabbling in those realms or like cannibal corpse which was just all out kind of gore and horror kind of lyrics uh, and although death i never really lumped them in with the death metal stuff that i liked even though I, I completely understand the origins of the band death and how they really helped kind of kickstart the death metal genre um, obviously a lot of people would argue that like possessed seven churches is like the first death metal record um I, I can see where you know the link is but the 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 albums that i like by death individual thought patterns and symbolic in particular um i don't personally class them as death metal records and i also don't class them as melodic death metal they're more just kind of metal and like if you watch the death to all documentary um you know they they talk about death uh, they talk about chuck's love of um like power metal and how that kind of more melodic element started to creep in on you know symbolic and uh sound of perseverance and it's always been something that's i don't really mind in it and I, it's not that big of a deal but when people would call silosis melodic death metal although we definitely had death metal influences and melodic influences i wouldn't lump it in with melodic death metal because that to me is like a lot of the swedish stuff like at the gates or in flames and that kind of stuff which admittedly has never really been like a a big influence on our sound uh, i loved like death metal growing up and I, nothing wrong with those bands much respect to them i'm into them but it's not something that was like we were putting into silosis the melodic elements for silosis was based around the stuff that death were doing on symbolic which i think they got more from like a i guess they got it more from like traditional metal the sort of like big epic melodic stuff that you hear on like master of puppets um, which is something funny to me when when you think about Master of Puppets and in particular, like just the grandiose orchestral sounding element to their melodic side, you know. Um, it was a weird thing where when I got into thrash and I was just like obsessing with Metallica and going back and discovering all these thrash bands, I was like, why isn't any of anyone ripping off like this grandiose epic orchestral kind of classical music inspired element to Metallica? Everyone's ripping off like just the riffs, but no one's ripping off like that melodic aspect so the really big epic feel of the melody of metallica which is also present on symbolic in a slightly different way like that kind of melodicism that's what where the melodic elements come into silosis and influence and then we also like you know a lot of thrashy stuff and a lot of more like traditional death metal so although there's like we have some death metal influence and we have melodic influences I wouldn't class us as melodic death metal and back in the day i'd kind of be annoyed because i'd like i'd try and explain these things like this is where our influences are this is what we're trying to do and even though there's death metal elements and we always have a lot of melody in our music we're not mellow death but um either way i don't really care i don't care what people call us it's fine but um I'd always kind of be like, no, I don't think we sound like that. Like all of those like Swedish melodic death metal bands like Downtune and they play more like, you know, Downtune kind of Iron maiden -y type riffs. And we were more just like doing thrashy stuff, but with, I'd just say more like Metallica kind of melodicism to it. Anyway, that's besides the point, just something that uh, came to mind as I was talking. But yeah, Symbolic by Death, hugely inspirational record for me. 
Uh, I really like the artwork as well. I think, um, like I said, like uh, something about the lyrics and the way it was a little bit more, uh, you know, forward thinking in terms of the lyrical approach and not quite as just like, uh, you know, typical like death metal or metal lyrics for the time, which was uh, definitely in like the late 80s, early 90s. You had a lot of like Slayer, Satanic stuff or Cannibal Corpse, horror kind of stuff like that. And admittedly, when I was a kid, I'd be putting like upside down crosses and pentagrams all over my school books and my bag and stuff because I just love that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like definitely huge influence for me. And also, like I said, Individual Thought Patterns is definitely a close second. That was the first proper record I got. And I still, I listened to them both probably equally, but the production on Symbolic was just a bit, a bit uh, tighter and cleaner. And I think it's Jim Morrison and Morris Sound. And I think Individual was Scott Burns. And uh, yeah, just the songs, the finesse of everything on Symbolic, just the whole package. I think it's one of the best metal records of all time and maybe the one of the most underrated records of all time um especially like i couldn't believe how good it was when i found it when i finally got a copy of that cd i was like why is this not in any music shop i've ever been in why have i never seen this physical cd and they definitely re reissued it later and not many people are buying physical cds now but you do see it or i did start to see it a bit more commonly you know in like the late 2010s and that kind of thing but um i do remember at the time just being like this has been so hard to find and it is one of the best records i've ever heard so if you haven't checked it out and you like silosis we owe a lot to that record